Hey, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Sorry for the long delay in continuing this part. I had some work to do, but now I'm back in business. All right, so let's continue our course and hopefully we can get to the end. So on the curriculum table, this is the only tab that we are really remaining with. So in here, we have a few problems that we need to fix. So we have a section here, section one, section two, but we can add a lecture over here. But let's try and fix these issues we have. For example, if I want to swap these, this can swap, but uh, delete doesn't seem to work at all. If I click delete and I click OK, um, this is what happens instead. It ends up deleting the wrong things. So let me refresh again. And let me add that and let's see what's really going on. So if I right click and inspect the element here, I want to see what the delete, where the delete takes us so that we know what's really going on. So I want to see what activity is happening. Maybe I can see something here if I do that. So we don't get any errors. So it's not an error issue. It's probably, it just means that uh, the things are pointing in the wrong direction, obviously. So let's see what that could be. So now if we go back to our project and let me go to uh, the section that has the JavaScript, which is courses view in the admin uh, folder of the views folder. So let's go down to the, um, uh, to the code. So likely we have specific code. This is the lecture section with a problem. So we definitely know that this lecture part has an issue. So when we click delete, what exactly happens? So let's look for the delete button. Where is the, let's see here, drop tab. Where is the delete? See, this is the problem when you've been um, not around, uh, when you've lost touch of a project for a while, this is what happens, you lose touch of the code. All right, that's why commenting is very important. So you have to add comments in your code, very important. So if delete action is equal to delete, so this is what we have right now. So what we need to do is just monitor to see where exactly the problem starts from. The first thing we have to know is does it come to this? So here I'm just going to put an alert just to see whether we get to this point and then put a return so that it doesn't go any further than it needs to. So just want um, to see if we can remove uh, or we get to there. So let me just refresh and let me click, let me close down this because we are using an, an alert anyway. So I'll click that and it actually works. It gets there. So that is uh, good news gets to this point. How does it get to this point when in fact I have put a return key there? So something is weird here. Hmm. Okay, what I will do is mute this whole part just to make sure it isn't running, right? We return there. And so I'm going to refresh, click here and click delete. I get there, but if I say OK, then all that disappears. OK, so I think what's happening here is that there's some bubbling going on, right? There is some bubbling going on. So what we need to do is stop that. Now, what is bubbling? Now, bubbling is, let's say, because the event listener is added to the top of this thing, right? Where is the, um, anyway, I want to explain bubbling here. So let's say you have an item here. So I have this item, but it has an event listener, right? There's an event listener right here to listen in to this whole section here. But then there's another event listener that listens in to the whole 
uh, entire section here. So there's one that listens to the section part and one that listens to the lecture part. But the problem is once I click here, the events bubble up. So if I click here, it's not just this event listener that's here that will get triggered, but even outward here, it will keep propagating to the outside. So this is why even though I have exited my code here, it goes on to the other section, to this other object as well, and actually triggers it. So we have this other delete here. I can prove that by putting another alert here and say uh, triggered just there. Even though we know this is the other object, this object is the curriculum object and not the lecture object. So this is the main object. So if I refresh now, click here, click delete. So I have this original alert. Now, if I get the triggered alert, it means the event bubbled. And there it is. Look at that. This triggered. So it did bubble. So what we want to do is stop that bubbling. And how we do it is by saying E dot. There is this. So we have this event right there. So once our target is hit, we're just going to say E dot stop propagation like that to make it stop going any further into the bubbling event. So let's refresh. Let's see if that actually cleared it up. So if I click, we have this first one, but we don't get the triggered. So you see there, it stopped the bubbling right here. So normally what happens is you have, let's say on a page, you have the body uh, of, your, of your HTML, right? Inside the body, you have divs, you have um, maybe other elements within that div, and then you have a button. So what happens is that if you put your event listener on the body itself, and then somebody clicks the button, the body will feel that event as well, because the event will propagate from one, from the, whatever you've clicked to the parent, to the parent of that, to the parent, until it gets to the actual document itself. So the bubbling keeps going up. Now, if you don't want it to go all the way up, you can put an event list now on one of the middle parts and just say stop propagating right here. But if somebody clicks above that one, the stop propagating section, it is still going to work. So here, if I click this one, I should get the triggered still like that and cancel it. But here, if I click, I don't get the triggered alert because I have put a stopper somewhere here. Okay, so let me add one more and see if that worked as well. Same thing there. So we are in business. We stop that propagation right there. So up, let me go up here a little bit and remove that uh, alert I had put. Wait, did I just overshoot that? Okay, there we go. So this triggered alert must be removed. Okay, so now we're going down to our lecture uh, object back here. So now that we are here, let's see if there's still a problem. So I'm going to remove this, all this here, and uh, it should, things should be okay now. So let's see if that's what will happen. So we click here, we click delete, and say, you cannot delete this item. You need a minimum of one items. Do I? Anyway, let me add one more. Click delete. Uh, are you sure? Yes. And that's working just fine. Okay, cool. So if you don't want a minimum of one item, wait, there's minimum inputs here. Why is it telling me I need a minimum of one when I actually don't? So where is that delete once more? So right here, let me remove this alert. Ah, so e to target minimum. So let's look at that value right there. So where is min coming from? So min is equal to parse int e to target to get attribute min. All right. So whatever the target is, where we are clicking, there should be a min which is right there. Now where is min coming from? It comes from lecture.lecture.minimum inputs. 
So which is which one? Lecture dot lecture dot minimum inputs, which is zero. Okay, so why does it say minimum is one? Let me inspect this just to make sure that min is set to the correct value. Uh, where is it supposed to be exactly? On the delete, right? Mm -hmm. So where is the delete button? Let's inspect that. And min it says one here, but why? I do not understand why it says one. Oh yeah, because of that right there. Mm. Why am I putting min at one? Min should be equal to this. So let's see. Min is equal to okay. So I put it at one. Uh, if section is JS lecture, is it? I think I don't need this if statement because there's only one section really. So let me just remove that over there. Okay, that should work right there to remove that restriction. That way we can remove everything. So let me delete. Are you sure? Yes. Okay, so very cool. Uh, let me make sure we are deleting the right stuff. Let me put some text there and make sure we delete the one with text. And there we go. Things are working as needed. Okay, so this is cool. One more thing we need to prepare is that you see here we have the UID uh, attribute, right? This value, and then we have UID attribute. We have the name attribute here. Uh, let's see, what else? The name has all of these uh, lecture, then UID. Okay. Um, the problem I'm having is that UID is not unique here. The, the, the attribute name. This one has description. Hmm. Okay. One second here. Let's go to the admin where we're receiving this information. Okay. So I'm going to come down to the edit section here and i want to go to the save this is where we are saving good and i want to go to a particular tab which is the curriculum tab which is right here and here where we're looping through all the inputs and putting them in separate um, we have this metadata uids so all we're checking for is uid underscore so what I want to do is just see what's inside post when we send data. Um, just to refresh my memory, right? So I'm just going to do show post data like so. And then I will tell it to die right there. Okay. So back here, I will inspect the element so that I have my console. Uh, delete everything in there for now. And I just want to, let me add lecture here. So I'll just say lecture one and description one. Let me copy exactly this and say lecture two, disc two. Okay, so I want to send this and save and see what result I get here. So I'm going to click save and this is what I get. Okay, so everything in here cool, but then we have a UID, which is empty, and hmm, UID description curriculum, UID curriculum, okay, that's nice. Uh, then we have a UID underscore here, UID lecture one. UID description lecture one. Okay, so it's good that we have a description here and a UID for the description and lecture and the UID for it. Okay, I think things are okay. I was worried that there's no uniqueness to the UIDs here that I'm sending, but it seems 
there could be some. I'm not sure about this one here, what this is. Um, let's see, lecture. Uh, I think we will do just fine. So for now, uh, all we need to do now is repeat these guys, everything we have here, but for um, I'll leave this as it is so that we can still see it as we post. I'll leave that, but for the, I'll repeat these, but for the lectures. So here I'm going to say, uh, let's put some, some commenting here and say for, um, Anyway, everything is for the curriculum, so for sections, maybe. Let's do that. And then just duplicate this for lectures. So metadata, description, ID, blah, blah, blah. Let me duplicate this. And this is for lectures. All right. So we have uh, this data here. Let me copy that, those, uh, let me repeat them here. So there's metadata, but instead of meta, let's change this to lecture. Lecture data, lecture data UIDs, lecture data description. Oh, I changed the wrong ones. I want to change the second ones here. All right. So same thing here, I will go ahead and change the meta to lecture. So lecture data UIDs. The only difference I need now is to see what I need to do, what to look for here. So first of all, we have, um, what do we have? Oh, actually this shows up here. No need to use my console on this one. All right, so now that we've copied this here, we just need to make it recognize the lecture side of things as opposed to the curriculum side of things here, or the section. So this is for the section, this is for the lectures. And this is the information that we are receiving. So we need to sort this out into separate uh, arrays that are here. So let's do that in the next video.